you don't get to where I am without tolerating a lot of risk. And sometimes that means dealing with shady characters. But what are the risks at a hedge fund? Let's review how it looks for X Capital and see what we can learn about hedge funds risk in real life. Your time, folks. Market risk is the place to start. It's simply when the market moves against you. It doesn't happen often to Axelrod because... Bobby Axelrod is the most brilliant person you've ever met. But even if he doesn't need it often, he has a deep understanding of risk. You and the team are right. There's too much risk. And at firm level, there should be a way to measure I could risks. open myself up to a big loss. If there's an unexpected event. Brazil does not normally have tsunamis. One widely used tool is VAR, or value at risk. It's a measure of the risk of loss, and it usually looks like this. In the middle, you'll see what happens on most days, small moves, the probability is high in the middle. On the left, there's the losses. They're assigned a probability, but we can here assign a type of event, a bad day or a very bad day. It estimates how much an investment might lose in a day, given a certain probability. For example, a tsunami is very rare. Black swan event. It would create a loss at that level. One practical implication is that there should be limits to ensure that trading positions don't blow up when markets move against you. Someone should be able to monitor all the trades to understand the aggregate risk across the firm. How heavy are we in Brazil? Jim Morrison at the end. Axe doesn't really seem to care about that. He just trades the amount he wants while pacing the corridor. As soon as the stock's up 1%, start whacking bids again. But if new trades were checked against limits, that could avoid the risk that we see in this scene. I've got to dump 5 million shares of Blue Horn Steel at 4. Maffi can't sell his position. No broker will take all 5 million and guarantee my price. Usually, liquidity risk is due to the nature of the assets. Hedge funds can invest in real estate or complex products that are not easy to sell. Here, it's equities, which are normally liquid, but they should ask themselves, how did we get into that? What if you create a zero-cost collar? Now, with Axel Roll as CEO, maybe risks matter less because he just knows what to do. For example, he knew that an earthquake in Mozambique would create a tsunami in Brazil. Figure that out. But what if he is not around? That's an operational risk. Key personnel risk should be considered a hedge fund. How reliant is the organization on an individual that may not always be there? And are the key employees competent, honest? And that brings me to compliance. There are a lot of issues at Axe Capital. They didn't even have a compliance team until those guys These arrived. assholes work here now? And we won't see them past episode one. Let's move to transparency. It's a common risk with hedge funds, as they can be black boxes. You don't know what's going on inside or you don't understand it. That's mainly an issue for quant funds where the algorithms are not transparent. And you know that quant is just another word for wild fucking guess with math. Axe Capital, on the other hand, is straightforward. They buy and sell stocks, mainly without leverage. Longs, shorts, sells, covers, all alpha welcome. Yet there's still an issue because there's no clear strategy. And for an investor, that means you don't really know the risk you're taking. I'm here to break the glass. How do they deal with risks? In case of emergency. They have a process to deal with emergencies. He's allowed to break the glass. And that's not straightforward. In current events, the Archigos blowout is an example of how important this is. I'm not talking about Archigos internally. The founder was running it as a private family office. He could do whatever he wanted. The risk management issue was on the other side, the banks that were dealing with him as his prime broker. Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley responded decisively and limited the damage. Goldman Sachs, it appears, uh, has gotten out of this unscathed, but what, what is the lesson? What, what did you learn from all of this? Well, Andrew, I think this is a classic case of an investor with concentrated positions that have leverage against them. And when a price moves against that party, it's important to take down risk, and I know you know, you know as, as well as we know, this is not the first time this has happened, and it's certainly not going to be the last. We'll certainly see this again. From my perspective, our risk controls worked well. We identified risk early on. We took prompt corrective action to lower our risk. On the other hand, Nomura and Credit Suisse suffered massive blows. Friend, to our knowledge, we have not yet seen blocks offered by the likes of Nomura, although it's possible Wells Fargo was selling off some of 
Nomura's stock. We haven't seen Credit Suisse in the market. We heard. In fact, margin call is inspired by Goldman Sachs during the 2008 crisis. And it shows how to handle risk in a big firm. All in all, how's risk management acts capital? With the founder's personality, we did not expect too much. But the fund managed to survive a black swan event even without the founder. They're doing okay. Not in the compliance department, not in the management of their value at risk, but at least they can react quickly and they have a process. I thought I was going to talk about alpha beta correlation this time, but it's going to come next. So please subscribe to find out more. And if you're interested in going deeper into this concept, check out the course in the link and don't hesitate to comment on what we should cover next. Thank you for watching.